Hey guys, this is uh, David One here, and this is going to be my uh, first video, but um, this is something just to get me started, uh, uh, this channel started, and so uh, today I just want to show off some uh, good basic tools that uh, if you're wanting to get into modeling or um, kit building or whatever, that'd be uh, helpful to, uh, to get. Um, probably leave some links down below, but um, yeah, so uh, let's get started. So. Um, I guess I'll start with the first thing that's probably pretty important is a pair of nippers. Um, these are just um, some basic, uh, I think they're uh, some wire cutters, I'm not sure. Um, but they were great for uh, 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 cutting off the nubs and whatnot, off, what not, and um, <coughs> really helpful. Not the sharpest, but um, they get enough gone to wear if you want to, you can go in with an X-Acto knife or whatever, remove the rest, sand it down. Uh, something that else uh, that might be a good idea would be this something that I use. Something I use. Um, it's actually a Swiss Army knife. Uh, this one is just a basic one with three attachments. It's got a, the, the knife end, the file, and then uh, the scissors. Um, these are really good for. Um, I've used them on photo etch. I've used them on. Um, normal kits. Usually they're better with um, smaller nub marks, uh, but pretty good tool if you have the money to spare. Buy one of these. This is okay. Or if you have one already, this is good to use. Um, yeah, these, um, you can buy some from New Type HQ or anywhere, basic modeling uh, store or section in a, say, Hobby Lobby or whatnot. And, uh, Shouldn't cost you too much. Next, we got um another really important tool. We got X-Acto knife. Pretty, pretty standard, pretty basic. Um, this one comes from it's the Hobby Lobby brand. Just nice, cheap. Um, this one came with several different blades. I currently got a, a curved blade on here right now. Um, you want to make sure you handle these with care. Obviously, you don't want to cut yourself. But um. Uh, this one I don't think ran me too much. I think it was maybe ten dollars. This came with several different blades. Um, but yeah, this is this is the second most important tool, honestly, in my opinion, uh, when it comes to modeling. Um, next we have obviously um, some tweezers. These are always handy. Nice. I bought these in a set. You don't. I don't. I'm missing one. I don't know where it went, but uh, it's curved at the tip. But these are always good for um, uh, you know, grabbing, holding something, applying photo etch, whole nine yards. They come in different variants. This one, see, it stays open, so you got to pressure it down to stay closed. This is the opposite. You got to pressure it open to stay open. Um, and then you have separate ones like this. This one's maybe better for painting. Not with the uh, wider tip, and uh, yeah, they shouldn't run you too much. I bought these in a pack. I think those were maybe ten dollars from uh, Hobby Town USA. I think again, I'll leave a link down in the description. Um, next uh, would be a pin vise. Again, not too terribly expensive. Bought this I think for seven to ten bucks. Um, again, from Hobby Lobby. Uh, with this one, you can um, undo it. It has two pin vices in one. And then there's a second one. I don't know if I have it stored in here or not. But if it is, no, it's not. But it comes with four different vices. So you can hold different variety of tools for, uh, say, drilling and... Um, even really holding something in here while you you cut it or whatnot. So this is this is a pretty good tool. I'll leave a link down in the description as well, obviously. Um, next tool would actually be a pencil. Now, if you're scribing, this is indispensable. You, I mean, these are obviously pretty cheap, um, but I use a mechanical pencil, uh, pretty basic. So you know what you're doing, so you don't mess it up. Uh, very important, uh, I'd say when it comes to scribing and whatnot. Um, but if you don't want this one, this one's this is obviously pretty optional. Um, this one 
this one's actually pretty interesting. This is a uh, hose hanger, uh, clothes hanger clamp. Now, um, I use these for, uh, uh, for wings and other types of uh, things like that that need to be glued together. And I don't have clamps. This is pretty good. You put this on the edge of the wing, like so, or not, yeah. And um, it holds it together, uh, so they're pretty tight. Um, these are pretty cheap, too. You can buy them at Kroger or any Walgreens or whatnot, or pharmacy, I do believe. Um, next is, um, pretty important obviously too, is uh, glue. Now I have two, uh, two different types of glue. Um, they're both testers brand, and they come in tubes. This one is a, uh, since they're plastic models, so plastic on plastic, this one has a slow s set time, so you have a lot of time to work with it, and you're able to move models, the, the model around, and and what you need to get done in perfect place. So you don't, you're not rushed with this. Now, this other one, this red bottle, it, it's good for. It's obviously plastic models. You can use it to glue things in place, like the last one. This has a faster set time. On top of that, it works much better with photo etch parts, um, uh, in getting those onto the the model. So these are pretty good. These are pretty cheap. Um, another glue that might be a good idea is uh, some liquid glue. This is this, to me an extra thin cement. Everybody's pretty much got it. Uh, if you look around, um, I know Hobby Lobby carries it. Hobby Town USA carries it. New Type HQ, USA Gundam, the whole nine yards, pretty much. So this I think ran me five dollars. I'm not. I can't remember. I would check, but. Um, Look around, see what's cheaper, obviously, but uh, definitely indispensable right there. Next we have uh, Tamiya uh, putty. This is the basic type, so it's the gray kind, and this is used for filling in um, seam lines. Um, what I've noticed is, and I've seen other people do, you can also use it for armor texture. So you take some of, um, in fact, let me use the one that I use. You can kind of see in there, it's kind of gray. Cause this is the one that I use for thinning it down. This is you can thin this down with Tamiya's uh, cement. I think even lacquer thinner. Don't I can't promise you on the lacquer thinner, but I do know for sure that the cement does um, thin this out, and um, it can be spread more evenly with um, with the cement. And this is good for all kinds of models. Um, if you're trying to fill something in, it really works uh, wonders. So this is this is definitely a go-to item. Next is a uh, dropper. I mean, uh, this is this could be used for paint, water, um, thinner, glue. Uh, though I wouldn't recommend glue since it's plastic. But these are extremely cheap. You can pick them up pretty much any hobby store, uh, and they're great. So um, there's that. Next we have a uh, caliper. Now calipers are pretty good. Um, this one's a uh, pipe caliper, even you can pretty much get them anywhere, but they're good for measuring um, uh, areas that you want to say uh, scribe. They're good for keeping it consistent, um, and uh, you're able to consistently get um, measurements with calipers. Um, obviously, you can grab some $20 plus ones, I think, on uh, Hob at Hobbytown USA's um, website. Um, I'll link those down in the description. They're more expensive, but they're also digital, and if you really want to get into them, I would recommend getting them. I've been thinking about getting them, honestly. Next we have um, pretty self-explanatory files. Um, you, got, you, you can get them at any hardware store. You might be able to get them at uh, hobby stores as well, but um, they're great for everything. You can file down everything from plastic to metal and they're indispensable. Always go for different shapes. This one's obviously a triangle. Um, and you got your standard flat file, um, two-sided. This one's for bulk removal, you know. So I mean, it, yeah, don't be afraid to use these either. Um, if you really need to get into a model, reshape it. These are indispensable. Don't waste your time with, you know, silly standing sticks like I got over here. If I can find one. All right, down here. Here we go. 
like these. These are very, I mean, they're higher grit, but it'll take you a lot longer to remove what you want to remove with this rather than this. So this is, these are pretty indispensable. These can get pretty expensive, but they're very much worth it. Um, so yeah. Next we have, I guess, some scribing tools. They're uh, kind of dental tools, but they're great for scribing. So if I can grab one out of here. Um, Two-sided. So, But these are great for, um, you know, scribing in detail. Pretty sharp, um, but nice, nice for grabbing the plastic out and whatnot. You could also use these probably maybe for sculpting, I would assume, but I usually uh, use these for scribing along with my exacto uh, knife. Pretty good tools. I got these also at Happy Lobby, I think, four to seven dollars. Can't remember. It's been a while. But next we have. Um, some pretty self-explanatory stuff. I'm grabbing stuff now because I obviously didn't have enough room to place it on here. We got some cotton, uh, just cotton balls and some cotton swabs. These are good for cleaning your airbrush if you have one. Uh, on top of the fact that I actually use them as a makeshift, uh, a makeshift uh, holding tool. So I got it in the hole, kind of taken down. So you're able to uh, paint while using this without uh, harming the model. And of course, with the cotton cotton ball, you got you can um, actually fill in spaces. Say a cockpit that you don't want to. You can also use foam, but I use I like to use cotton balls because you can nice and spread them out, nice and easy. And you can always compact them nice and tight, and just nice spaces. <clears throat> Next, another obvious choice, some nice small paint brushes. Um, obviously, if you're brush painting a model, you might want to get something larger, say something akin to this. Nice um, flat brush, so you can get nice brush strokes, or not nice brush strokes, but um, nice amount of paint onto the model. But these I use for detail work say in cockpits or on um, smaller bits of the model. As you can tell, this is um, 10 out of 0, or 10 over 0. It's the brain right here. Um, got this at most, I get almost all my um, paintbrushes at a Hobby Lobby. So, if you got one of those near you, you can probably get one of these. r and uh, 10 over uh, 1. Same size, different brush length. Still really good. Um, sorry about that, I was out of focus. Still kind of getting used to this camera setup. But next we have a. Um, oh, it looks like another one. I shouldn't. I think personally they go because I mean if you look, this one is a whole lot thicker than this one right here. This one's a lot more fine. Actually, finer tip. You can see that it'll focus. Yeah, a lot more finer of a tip than this one right here. So it just depends on what you're working with. Um, I like to keep, at least on this smaller one, um, the cover on it to keep the bristles from moving around. But very indispensable. Very good for detail work. Um, Another thing that is optional would be sanding pads. I think these are a god hand tool actually. So nice premier product. These are nice. These are the thinner ones. So you got your 4,000, your 6,000, 8,000, and 10,000 grit um, sanding uh, pad. These are great for finishing off nub marks if you're just base building a Gumpla um, or a snap build kit. Um, with the with the 10,000, and if you get higher, you can get almost uh, a gloss finish. In fact, I have some other ones I think I got from Hobby Lobby. Uh, yeah, I have a 12,000 grit 
um, one, so it, this one goes higher than even God Hand. And these work pretty good. They finish it nice and smooth. Uh, you don't get much uh, scrape marks off of it. And it's, these really work great. Uh, again, I'll probably leave a link down in the description for these. Sorry, I keep rambling on about the link in the description. But um, next we have, I also got from Hobby Lobby, small little sanding stick sponges. So they, they have a bit of hard plastic in the middle, so, but they're also a bit squishy, if you can see that. They can form just a little bit. And these are great for getting in some smaller spaces as well as getting a finer uh, grit. I think these are 800 grit, but I'm not sure, either 800 or 600. So not fine, but not terribly um, <clears throat> gritty. So these are great uh, tools. Um, obviously, if you're painting your model, you need masking tape. Tamiya has some great masking tape. They have, I think this is their is it 10 or 8, this is 18 actually, my bad. They're 18 millimeter, and I have their, I think it's, I guess they're 10, no, it's my bad, 6 millimeter. And these are the two um, tapes that I use for masking. What you can also get, instead of using the tape, is a micro mask or a liquid masking um, solution. This I would make sure it's a uh, water soluble so it's um, water based. So if you're using acrylic be careful. I've noticed sometimes with some of my acrylics it takes the acrylic off. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, just depends. This is really good. You apply this with a brush as well. So really indispensable when you're coming to masking. Obviously you have other brands but typically, I find with most common, most commonly, or um, you can also get 3M masking tape, but I don't think they go as small as that, but they could. Those might be cheaper than um, Tamiya. Next, you want to get some, uh, if you're, if you're um, going with aircraft models or any clear pieces, um, canopy glue. Got this from Hobbytown USA. Really good. Um... Dries clear, so that's really important. Doesn't get your um, uh, canopies foggy like normal super glue does. So that's another great thing to do. Next would be some scissors for cutting out decals. These are some, I think, standard fabric scissors from Hobby Lobby. Um, nice and sharp. Um, I have like four pairs of scissors for using all kinds of stuff. So those are another thing. This, uh, obviously, is some uh, needle nose pliers, another good one. This also has some metal cutting bits, some wire cutting bits. I use these for cutting um, bits of metal, like from paper clips, if, if I want to, or uh, springs or whatever, to use for modifying my kits. Um, you can also hold bits in here um, and say, help, say if it's a real small piece of metal or whatever and you need to sand it down, you can hold it in here get your file, send it in there, so instead of holding with your hands, you got that little bit right there, or whatever. Um, helps you sand it without losing it, or whatever. Um, another thing would be an actual um, uh, bit of clamps. This is a, just a standard Craftsman. Um, I don't know where the other rubber bit went, but necessarily you don't need it. Um, this is good for uh, uh, fusing fuselages, fuselages together or larger bits of pieces. Obviously, this can go pretty large. So, there's that. Um, next would be this is optional right here. Would be a small vice, say a desk vice or a um, small jewelry vice. <clears throat> this one I had laying around. Um, you can get some, I think there's some on, uh, had, I think it's Hobbytown HQ, and you can get some off of Amazon, but these are good for, obviously, they're vices, some in, indispensable. Put that on your bench, you can slap whatever in there, tighten it up, and then, say, sand away or whatever, cut away. And uh, even if you're gluing, too, you can use this as a form of a clamp. Just have that on your desk. This is pretty good. I use this every once in a while if I'm 
really needing to uh, clamp something. If I'm, say, uh, trying to make a, uh, a scratch build, say, uh, some gun barrels for a 172nd scale BF109, per se, this is good to use. So, there's that. I think, lastly, I'm going to go into airbrushes. This one... Easy run of the bill airbrush, pretty cheap. It's a master's airbrush, good start as airbrush if you're wanting to get into airbrushing. Um, let's see, yeah, I don't have any other, so it's gonna make any fish sounds. But, um, basic right now, I have the end cap off, which is let me grab it this thing right here. So, this would just go on the end, um, like so. I like to take it off because the uh, paint can get caught in this and then it can cause your paint to splatter instead of going on smoothly. It has a nice cup, nice action. Um, I think this is a 0.5 millimeter uh, uh, needle. I don't know if you can see that or not, but I've, I have um, bent it just a little bit. Unfortunately, I probably need to get a new one, but it hasn't run me any trouble. Um, it's a pretty sturdy airbrush. I'm looking at getting me a, an Awada airbrush here real soon. This has served me really well. This is my just run of the mill, slap some paint on, it worked just great. And then I came with a, it came with a, 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 a uh, just run of the mill standard airbrush compressor, no tank on it. So it'll get a little noisy, but um, Really, really good if you're airbrushing. Um, I would recommend getting this as a starter if you've never airbrushed before. People who've airbrushed before, this is um, maybe a workhorse. Say you need a you, you're using really degrading paints or something, or you need a something that can just lay down some stuff that um, you may not want to ruin with your um, higher end. I say I want to airbrushes. Um, I, people like in Korea, I think, when they're making gunpla, use this like floor wax or whatever it is. It's gloss, and um, that's probably going to be a pain in the behind to clean out. So if you uh, want an airbrush that can survive that, or you're not worried about breaking or clogging up, this is definitely one. In fact, I've clogged this up more than once, and I've been able to unclog it. That's pretty simple. Um, the replacing parts aren't too much either. Um, nice little kit that it came with. Came with a, a screwdriver to unscrew the very end of the nozzle. Um, let me grab that real quick. It's over here. That's the G22 model uh, Master Airbrush. And uh, so this is the actual little nozzle. I've actually ended up broken. So it's 0.3 millimeter. My bad. But you got a nice little screwdriver. And then it comes with a quick detached system right here that I do not have installed right now. I got here. And um, pretty good. I haven't used it though. So that's why it's sitting here in the box. And it had a little dropper. As you can see, that end up getting thrown away because it got too, a little too messy. Um, but it comes in like this, and I have the cap. Where is it? It's somewhere over here. But it has a cap, so it's not just going to be an open um, uh, little thing. I don't, I don't I forget what you call these. I'm not into the lingua. I kind of just do things as I go. But obviously what I got underneath me cutting mat. These are really good. It's two-sided. So you got some lines here, some angles. This side has inches and I think, yeah, centimeters right here. And this other side, I flip it around for you. It has a uh, circles. So you can probably cut out some circles if you needed to. Um, good tool. Um, really good tool. Of course, you can see I got some paint on here because I painted on it. Um, but yeah, those are some, those are some tools that I would recommend getting if you're trying to get into this hobby. Um, 
course, you can. I would say some of the tools, like I said, you can pick and choose. Like you don't need, say, eyedroppers out right off the bat if you're not airbrushing or um, a pencil if you're not scribing new stuff or a pen vise if you're not custom making or you don't feel like you need to um, drill holes in anything. Um, and the vise, obviously, the standard desk vise or jeweler's vise, you don't need that if you're not scratch building anything. But, um, yeah, I, I hope you enjoyed this, uh, this, I guess, hopefully it's short video. Um, plan on making more videos, probably of me, my painting process, maybe me scratch building some stuff, uh, showing what I know. Hopefully people can learn from me. I don't know everything. I kind of, like I said, I, I, I learn as I go, kind of makes it, make it up as I go along, um, don't really have a process or a, um, um, go-to method of things, I kind of just wing it, so, what I learn, I'll share with y'all along the way, and, uh, hope you all enjoyed, like, comment, subscribe, that's the obligatory, uh, plug, I guess, I'll link my Instagram down in the description, if you came from Instagram, thanks for coming, um, yeah, um, this is David01 Customs signing out. Bye.